15 years ago, Sachs traveled the world for a BBC series called The Mind Traveler. He met various people with all sorts of conditions, many of whom he'd studied over the years and subsequently written about. <laughs> you feel the deafening noise. How do you sense it? One of these case studies was Danny Delcom. Just feel the vibration. At the time Sachs filmed with Danny, he was running a popular Cajun restaurant in Seattle, but this was no ordinary restaurant. To all appearances, it was just like any other good Cajun restaurant. Spicy food, sizzling pans, enticing smells. Yet there was something different about the place. Everyone was communicating in ASL, American Sign Language. The waitress gave Danny orders in ASL. The customers were chatting in ASL. Oh, I like your hearing aids, nice color. The Rage and Cajun was a restaurant for the deaf. Danny is originally from Louisiana, which has the world's highest concentration of a rare genetic disorder called Usher syndrome, a condition Danny was born with. Usher syndrome destroys two of the senses, hearing and sight. So Danny was born deaf and would eventually go blind. Right now, this is about my vision of square. I'm limited to this. And then when I become fully blind, I don't know what that'll be like. As Danny and Maria describe their failing sight, I try to imagine what the future could hold for them. What would it be like no longer being able to see all the beauties of nature around them? Within 10 years, Danny will be virtually blind. Danny has since moved an hour and a half outside of Seattle. I went to meet him and with the help of an interpreter, found out what had changed for him over the last 15 years. 1996 was when the BBC came and Oliver Sacks and we made the documentary, which was very uh, enjoyable, interesting experience to do. My goal had been to run the restaurant for about 10 years. That had been my plan. I actually made it nine. At that point, I sold the business and wasn't sure what I was going to do next, if I was going to go into something else or what. But about that same time, I met my wife, we got married, and lo and behold, we began a family. And it started to make sense for me to be the stay-at-home parent, to become what we call Mr. Mom. You guys hungry? Yeah. Since they married, Danny's wife, Debbie, has learned sign language. And the children who were unaffected by Usher's syndrome also talk to their father through basic sign language. I did everything, the diaper changing, the feeding, the works, playing with the children as they've grown. Um, and oh my goodness, that is a busy job. <laughs> I hadn't quite realized it is not an easy task. I'm just interested to know that where, where Danny's Usher syndrome is today. So in this room, for instance, what can you see around us? It's a pretty small tunnel. Looking at the interpreter, I can see, I can't see anything on either side of her at all, but I can see kind of from her shoulder, inside of her shoulders, most of her face, and down just the top of her chest, sort of that area, that little circle or square. And from this distance, this is a good distance for me. If she were to come closer, I couldn't see enough of her. But I'm functionally blind in the right eye. I have light perception, but that is it. It's basically all dark with a little pinpoint of light. And then at night, or if the light is dim, I'm, I'm basically blind. He still got he still got some vision. Yeah, I was wondering, yes, it's probably very, very, very narrowed. Very, very narrowed indeed. Yes. And yet there's a sort of optimism in Danny, as his wife acknowledged to me, that he's not really prepared to concede 
Yes, uh, though, though perhaps there's there's all the difference between a little vision and, 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 and no vision. He is a very resilient person, has a lovely sense of humor, but he will always have language. And even when he can no longer see, uh, one can have sign language on the hand. When Sachs filmed with Danny, he met a whole community of people with Usher's syndrome at a summer camp. Here he witnessed the deaf blind for the first time and how they communicated with tactile sign language. Denied sight as well as hearing, these people were talking with touch. I'm just jumping around. I'm amazed at how much can be got sometimes from just apparently feeling the wrist of the signing hand. There's obviously a complete communication. Now, what else has so fascinated me has been the hunger for communication, the hunger for language, the world which can't be directly perceived, which can't be seen or heard, must be narrated. You can sometimes forget how central language is to being human. You may have to come to deaf people, and especially these deaf-blind people, to see that human beings can't live without language, can't live without communication, and they will create it somehow. As Danny's sight fails, he's relying more and more on tactile sign language. He will eventually only see through touch. But whilst he still has some vision left, he's taken up a new interest. Of all things, photography. As I watched him photograph his children, I realized it helped him see things clearer. He could capture a still frame of something that most of the time was blurred. He was capturing what he loved, things worth seeing and honing in on. He told me how he spent hours in his garden photographing details of flowers and the wildlife. All small, beautiful creations. Some of my favorite shots are of the hummingbirds out here in our backyard. And I have to tell you, it was a trick figuring out how to take a picture of a hummingbird because they move. And I didn't want them just at the feeder because that's just not natural. I wanted them at the real flowers. So I would just wait and wait and wait and um, hold very still. And lo and behold, I got some very nice shots. Some of them very close where you can really see those long, long beaks. I wasn't very good at it at first, but now I've got some really, really beautiful pictures. Have you transferred your love of cooking to your love of photography? Yeah, a little bit. A little bit, that's what happened, I think. Whether I could ever make a business out of it selling my pictures or whatnot, I don't know. I'm seeing in you, Danny, a camera obsessive. I think that's right. Yes, and I'm fascinated at some of the cameras you all have here. My goodness, they uh, far outstrip anything I can afford at this point. <laughs> I left Seattle surprised yet again by the resilience of human beings and the resources they can command, both individually and communally. At times, not knowing sign language, I had felt that I was the only impaired person there. But the greatest revelation was the beautiful language of touch. I would not have thought that touch alone could be an adequate instrument for understanding a language. But I was mistaken. Yet, perhaps I should not be astonished. The human brain, after all, is the most wonderful and adaptable creation in the universe. <laughs>